Hi everyone, welcome back to Code Step by Step. My name is Anil. This is the second part for React, Redux, and Saga series. And in this part, we will understand the flow of React, Redux, and Saga, as well as I will tell you that why React only is not enough, why we need Redux, and why we need Saga. I will show you the architecture of Redux as well as Saga so that you can understand it better. And before starting with the code, you will be uh, confident that you can understand that okay why we are making this file why we are making this file and what is the use of saga how actually uh, redux will interact with the react all question will be clear in that video right so now let's start with the first question which is what is react and here i will just tell you that why react is not enough to make the web development why we need saga and redux and all see you know that react js is basically a library for web application development right this is not a complete package yes this is really fast and easy to use but this is not a complete package like angular in angular you can find that routing state management everything you will find in a, a single framework because angular is a complete framework but react js is just a library right so when we want to add some extra features like state management validations routing that time we must have to add external packages but there is a one more disadvantage which is no state management in react there is really hard to share data between components yes there is a one way to share the data which is context API, but that will fair enough for small and medium size applications. When you are you are working on a real really large application, that time you really need a state management tool like Redux, right? So here we understand that there is some difficulty in share data between uh, components in React JS, but how they actually components works and let's understand it with the picture pictorial representation right so let me go back here and first i am just going to show you a basic diagram of a web application all right so here you can see that we have uh, some components like this is the header part we can understand this is the footer part and this is the middle area right and in react js everything is a component inside the component so in a header, we have a, another three component, component A, B, C, let's say this is the D, E, F, and G, H, and this is a gray one is also I, then let's say O, M, N, and O, right? So all these components. So when you want to share the data between component A to component O, that is really hard. If you have a small application, then context API is fine. But in large application, when you want to send data from here and there, that time context API is not really helpful, right? So let's say with the same time you want to send the data from C to F, F to again uh, O, and then H to E, and then E to A, and A to D, and D to M, right? So if you want to share data like this, that time context API will not gonna help you too much. It will just make your application slower and that is not actually up to the mark. That time we need a Redux. All right, so with this diagram, we again understand that this is really hard to send data from component one to another component, right? Okay, let's understand again. Once again, let's understand it with the actual scenario. So here you can see that we have a e-commerce cart page right just give me a moment this page is actually loading right and here you will find that we have some product in our cart this is the one component oh, sorry my bad yeah this is the one component we have right and this is another component fine 
yes there can be another component like uh, this is the another component this, this can be another component but let's assume that there is only two component for simplicity so let's say i just increase the quantity from one to two that time the total price should also be increased here right agree with that and discount should be also increased maybe if this is in percentage total price should also be increased so there should be some impact but as we just discussed that there is a really hard to just share data from one component to another component i am just giving an example but this is really easy if we are using redux right so this is really hard again that can be a scenario let's say you are searching something here let's say you just search some mobile right and this data should be listed here like in all e-commerce site then how this data will come from here in a uh, header part to the this middle part again that is uh, really challenging in case of uh, uh, react js so the solution of all these things are redux now uh, what is the redux how it actually can provide a solution let's first go with the theoretical part see again this is a library and this is a state management library so now you may be confused that what is that state state simply means data management right state can be another meaning also in the different different terms but just make it simple you can say that uh, this is just a data right that is a data management uh, library for simplicity all right so or you can say that this is a global data management tool right so what is the global data management tool that means it can manage the whole data of your application right uh let's say uh, you have a big application uh, there is some data for uh, cart there is some data for user there is some data for search all data can be handled inside the redux and why we call it globally because when we are sending data from one component to another component we must have to send it on the uh, anywhere in the global after that we can send it anywhere okay so just complete these all points then i will just uh, go for the another diagram and i will just tell you that how it's actually work so another point is that this is a predictable state container that means when we want to send data from component to component v obviously in a component a we have to just click on some button or some make some action but how component b will just get to know that i have to receive the data that is completely handled by the redux we don't need to care about that how it's actually just tell to the another component that i am just updating some data like uh, i will tell you how it, how it actually work or in another definition you can say that with the help of redux we can share the data between multiple components let's say from component a to component b or component a to component d we can share the data right so let me just give you an some another example okay so here you can see that uh, we have the different different components there last time right but what actually we have to do here in redux redux will just make a wrapper of around our application like it will just uh, close it in the complete wrapper then it will store the data inside uh, let's say this is the redux store it will store the data here like component b from component b it will store the data in um, redux Redux store. We will send data from component B to Redux store. Then let's say from component B to foot, we want to send data from footer. It will automatically send this data to the footer. And now let's say in a component E, right? So let me just change the pen, right? So let's say from component E, you want to send that the data this in component O. then again you will send this data to the redux store and it will come back to the uh, in component o automatically it everything will be handled by the redux right i will just give you the more explanation with the architectural diagram but let's understand it here once again it will make a complete wrapper around uh, the application then it will store all data inside the storage and this is a storage from here we can get the data in any component you can say that 
let's say just uh, just remove it all this data so let's say this is your uh, application right again it have some components let's say a b c and d you want to send from data from this to this first of all you will send this data to the store that will be redux store and component d, d will automatically get this data from component store and not even only d after storing this data to the uh, storage component c b and f all components can get this data that's why we say it this is the global data or we can stay, say that state management because we will just send some data to the uh, this redux store and we can get it in the anywhere in our application all right so fine we uh, we got that uh, we got that point let me just un uh, tell you that how it actually redux work for now so this is the redux architecture let me let me just open it once So here you can see that we have a view right around the view we will make a wrapper of redux this is our redux right even this complete thing is actually inside the redux wrapper right uh, okay so let's say we have some components here i can just mention some components like say component a b c d e f and all right so component a let's say you want to send data from component a to d again then first of all you have to hit a action from component a to you will hit a action that is this basically a simple file then component uh, a to inside from action to uh, reducer you will send the data what actually action do whatever what will redux uh, reducer do i will just tell you in the upcoming video because i will make a separate video on action reducer and store i will tell you uh, because this is a little bit com complicated why you will just think why we cannot only send this data to the store directly or reducer di directly because there is a lots of filter we have to write some we have to call apis we have to make logics that why this is a complete structure so first this is a standard way to first of all we have to call the action action will call reducer and reducer will store data inside the store uh, send data inside the store and now from store we can get this data from any component like from in c in d in e in b even in a we can get it in anywhere right this is how actually redux work again let me show you one more example let's say because why i am sh showing you again and again so that it should be clear in your mind because in the upcoming video we should not be uh, in in our mind there should be not any question like why we are creating redux why we are creating saga and all right so let's say this is our, our complete application there is some uh, components a b c and d again we will make a wrapper of redux then we will make a action action right action will basically call reducer and this reducer will basically store the data inside our redux store and after its store can send data anywhere like in component a b c and d right whenever let's say first of all we have some data like we have its value one and we want to send this value to the component c then we have to send uh, the action reducer and store and store will just tell that we have received value one we don't need to make any action here we just need to make action here only in a component component c will automatically get it when its value will be two or three or hundred anywhere it will automatically get it here right we don't need to make any change here uh, store will automatically send that data inside that uh, component c it, he know that where he have we have to send the data right so that's fine now we understand that why we need redux so again we have a question that what is saga then why we use it see in that scenario there is a issue let's say in an action we are just calling any api 
an api just taking some time let's say it, it is taking some 30 second or some time due to server slow or large amount of data in api or in server side processing but we know that javascript don't wait for data they don't wait for result right to handle them we uh, previously we basically are using promises or we are using async await async await but this is really hard to apply uh, promises async await inside the redux so we have a option of saga in action we basically inject here saga and saga will basically handle that api call or any async data how i'm explain you here that is what i actually mentioned here this will basically handle async data in redux we call it middleware why we call it middleware because it will handle the async data between redux and react js right all right so just uh, let me show you one more example actually how it's actually work uh, in case of uh, saga so again we have a sa same structure this structure basically belong to the redux that is completely redux there is a no change and that is only a saga there is a only one file and just only one patch that is only saga so from view we will send some data let's say we want to call api so we give an instruction that let's call api then it will call api but as you know this is the async operation so it will first call saga we will tell them that you have to call that saga then it will make some saga operations get perfect data then it will uh, send this data to the action and again uh, saga will uh, call redux uh, reducer and reducer will store the data in store and we will get this api data there in any component in a component b component c component anywhere right so that is the whole you can say that working process behind the uh, redux and uh, saga if you still have any confusion please ask me in the comment box that is really important to understand that complete working flow otherwise we will you uh, if you will directly jump on the code then you will don't understand that why we are writing what we are writing right so that's all please uh, when i am just making a request to you i really need your support please uh, support me by like this video share this video and comment section and please subscribe my channel also thank you so much